Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. Oh. Zach, Emily arranged for... Ugh, it's still closed, I know. I thought I would just... Uh, okay. <clears throat> we'll fast forward. There was a big green dot over there where I parked in the middle. And I thought, hey, we can go there a little faster than usual. Well, faster. A little earlier. But no, we gotta wait 20 more minutes, so, um, yep, I'll see you then. Whoa! Almost crashed that car. <coughs> finally! Finally! Oh my god, I uh, have to wait in a bloody game to play more of the game. Finally. Alright, you better not crash now. That's otherwise, I don't know what to do. Greenvale Community Center. It's gonna be fun talking. Greenvale Community Center. Yes. Now that's an impressive building. Clock. Yes, I'm just gonna skip that because we've. Well, actually, we haven't seen that. Oh, almost, almost seemed like it would crash there. The music is there, so I'm not sure. I don't think that was there before. Yeah, there we go. It didn't crash. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time, either. Well, that was a tough role. That was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. The microphone is right there. Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Just call me York. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. What's with Truly all the... Truly a heinous, terrible crime. Flies. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Uh-oh. The saxophone. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I asked to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Um, okay. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of Anna's age, please guide your children away from such places at all costs. It's probably him. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. <laughs> now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful. I would hate to see more victims. Mm, who's that? Bar owner and singer, Carol McLean. Who's the fashionably late one? That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. Oh. Hey, excuse me. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. Yeah. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Wow, that was it? <laughs> you could have just sent pamphlets out or something. Don't go out in rain. Women, be careful. That's it. Yeah, that was certainly worth everyone's time. Now this guy has something to say, and he clipped through the stairs. What? What are you playing at? Okay, he's gonna whisper. Oh, 
When paying for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. What? What a weirdo. Somebody forgot coffee there, and I have a feeling we can steal it. <laughs> when purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. What a complete and total weirdo, and I can see the same animation on several dozen guys in the back. Um. Sure knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zack, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Yeah, let's do so. And steal that coffee, of course. George! <clears throat> Agent Morgan, here's your chance to get to know some of the townsfolk. Don't let it go to waste. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. What's with all the flies? Jeez. Thomas. Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? Oh yeah, I mentioned it. I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? Uh, I do, actually. But why? Could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. Um. This is vital for our investigation. In front of everyone? <laughs> okay, if it's going to help you any. Darkness. <sighs> Darkness. What? <laughs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? What? Is he hurt you now? You see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. I don't know when he got that done, but we've all been through the 80s. Well, I don't see it because he still has the shirt on, so yeah. Uh, there's... Oh, what's going on? Oh, God, this guy Quite again. a performance. Mysterious and very poetic. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. What's that on his neck? Ugh. Mr. Francis York Morgan. The purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. It is not yet mine, that is, Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be. Informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. He whispered so, all that. Mary, you know something. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know. I don't think... Mr. Francis York Morgan, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Yes, Thanks thank you. Thanks for the you. warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Well, I don't. But apparently you do. We especially don't know how to drive a bloody car. What's this? Coffee, black. There we go. We can steal someone's coffee. They didn't get here. Wait, are these flies around us? Yes, they are. Does that... Wait a minute, does that mean we smell or something? Oh, God. Hello, Emily. 
Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? No. When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. Asking questions? I thought she was American. Shouldn't that be asking? That was a bit weird. Um, right, where is the bar owner? Yeah, those flies are ooh, definitely around me. No relations to the case. Anyone else? There must be someone else. Sorry about the flies, everyone. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, just use some pips or something. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, that's it, apparently. Well, there's the exit. I'm sure he would tell me, No, no, we have to talk to the people. Yeah, we really got to know a lot of people here. Wow, that was awesome. Right, what's over here? Oh, there we go. Carol. What's this? Cigarette. Heavy. You can't keep this item anymore. Let's put it into the toolbox there. Heavy. Right. Hello. Oh, he's smoking as well. Great, of course he's smoking. It's four already? Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead, even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic. Gain one and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner. And she'd always have a smile on her face. Always having fun. So Everyone psycho. looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angel smiled with her too. <laughs> oh, there we go. More, uh... Profiling. Yeah, so basically she was a psycho. She broke plates, she smiled while doing it, and yeah. Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. Wait a second. Carol has the same face as all the other women, just slightly different textures. You know... <laughs> <laughs> These cutscenes are so hilarious now that the flies are here. It's like, oh, I have to get away from him. He smells. That's probably what happened, actually. Oh, there we go. Uh, more people. Who's that? Hello, suspect. Yeah, just call me York. Good evening, agent. What? Ugh, Brian the Insomnia, Gravekeeper. So he Good can't evening, sleep. Mr. Brian. The Gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian. I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. <clears throat> too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. Also I totally agree. That's why I'm here. Looking for the one who did it. Were Sorry. you close to her? <laughs> Hmm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. What? Anna, blonde hair, so bright. Okay. He's definitely a suspect, but uh, only because... There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zach. <clears throat> I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. But yeah, he's, uh, you know, it's just the textures, they really overdid it. I know, I mean, yeah, sure, he's an insomniac, but uh, come on. Oh. You're York, right? I'm Richard Dunn, the owner of the darts bar, Swery 65. Richard Dunn, darts bar owner. How'd you like the town? Oh, it's great. Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. Murder just doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Oh. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town, just isn't a factor. Uh, I guess you're right. So, how did you know Anna? I've known her since she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all. Just like her mother, Sally. What do you know about Sally? Well, I, I went all through school with her right here in town. I never thought our children would be the same age. I don't see her here today. Ah, oh, well, see, she lost her husband, and this time it's her daughter. She's at home right now, trying to make peace with it all. You seem to know a lot. How long have you been in love with her? <laughs> hey, hey, don't go there. 
That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. It'll be better for you and me. You're right, Richard. Collecting gossip won't help with the matter at hand. Um, okay. What about the other one? I, was, I thought I would talk to both of them. He's got a Q. Okay. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Just call me York. So Anna was killed. But why does that bring the FBI here? Darts Bar employee, Quint Dunn, with a Q. I have an interest in murder cases involving young women. Well, you know, man, this might just be another case to you, but it means the death of a friend to me. And I don't want you taking this lightly like it's just another case. I never take anything of this nature lightly, I assure you. I'm here to apprehend the perpetrator who did this. Yeah, because local enforcement can't shine their own boots, right? Good point. You can't always count on the police now, can you? But that doesn't mean you're going to capture the perpetrator yourself, Quint. How do you know my name? I know everything. I memorized the name of every citizen before arriving in town. I also know about you and your significant other. You mean Becky? Don't underestimate the FBI. We know and see everything. <laughs> I'm sorry if I was a little harsh. I want to help, I do. Okay? Why is he on a boat? Okay, Zach, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. That was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend's name. I can read him like a book, Zach. <laughs> okay. That was a kick in the dark, but all right. I gotta get rid of these bloody flies. It's horrible. <laughs> Anyone else? Right, there's the Osha. Hey, New York, you make any progress? Of course, plenty. Uh, tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was her sole reason for living, after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. Okay. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Um, but don't go too hard on her, okay? All right. She'll just call me York. Uh, hello? Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Yes, because I'm... Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You yes. know, he already made a <clears throat> fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zach. He must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. He's listening. What? <laughs> that was weird. <clears throat> that was weird. I gotta get rid of the flies. Uh, we'll continue talking to these people next time. This is certainly getting interesting and more, uh, you know, uh, different. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.